Well, I've been talking about topographic maps for a little while here in the last several videos and hinting at the idea of elevation and contour lines, but now we're going to actually look at what contour lines are and what they represent. Topography means the shape of the land. It's an important vo vocabulary word this unit. A topographic map shows to scale the width, length, and height of the land above or below a reference plane, usually mean or average sea level. Showing the shapes of landforms is what makes a topographic map useful. A contour line is a line drawn on a topographic map, usually in brown on USGS maps, that connect all points that have equal elevations. The reference plane from which elevations for contour lines are measured is called the datum, usually its average sea level. The datum is located at the bottom of the map, uh, lower center. Um, you have a contour interval, and underneath that it'll tell you what the datum is. And this is the average sea level in 1929 is the zero that this map is measured from. To illustrate the concept of contour lines, imagine an island whose highest point is 55 feet above sea level. The datum is going to be the sea level or the zero mark. We're going to raise sea level by 50 feet and draw a line um, on the corresponding topographic map that marks the shoreline of the island at each 10 foot rise of sea level. So at the zero foot mark, we would just trace the shoreline. And then we will raise sea level by 10 feet and trace the new shoreline. Now notice that line that got traced, every point along that line is at equal elevation. And we know that because the sea level would level out and be flat. Raise it 10 more feet and trace the 20 foot contour line. Raise it 10 more feet and trace the 30 foot contour line. Raise 10 more feet and trace the 40 foot contour line. Raise 10 more feet and raise the trace the 50 foot contour line. Okay. Notice that we're going to have two tracings, one around this peak and one around that peak. They're no longer connected to each other. And we can see that in the map that we traced. Here's one of the 50 foot contour lines, and here's the other 50 foot contour lines. Contour lines conform to certain guidelines. There are some general rules that contour lines must follow. Um, rule number one, every point on a contour line is exactly the same elevation. So along a 5150 contour line, every point is 5150 above mean sea level, feet above the sea level. If you were to follow the path of that red arrow, if you walked along that line, you would never take a step uphill or downhill. You would always be at exactly the same elevation. Contour lines can never cross or divide now, if you think about it, this rule makes sense because if one contour line is always the exact same elevation, so let's say this one is 5150 above mean sea level, and the next one is a different con uh, elevation, like 5160 above mean sea level, well then how could they cross? If they were touching the same place, that would mean that the elevation was both 5150 and 5160 feet above sea level at the same time, and that's not possible. Rule number three, widely spread contour lines mean that you're on gentle slopes that are approaching being flat. And the further apart those lines are, the flatter it is. In the top picture, you can see the arrow showing you the gentle slope. And in the bottom picture, it's showing you that the contour lines are fairly far apart. Rule number four, closely spaced contour lines mean that you have steep slopes. So if the contour lines, as shown in the bottom diagram where the red arrow is pointing, if the contour lines are very, very, very close together, that means that you have an incredibly steep slope. 
Um, if you have a cliff, the lines are drawn very tightly packed. And you might say, well, wait a minute, you said contour lines can't cross and they look like they're going together right here. Uh, they're really not. If you could zoom in enough, they're just very, very, very close together. But for everyone coming in on this side, there's one going out on that side, and they have not reordered. They're in the same order that they went into this kind of dense jumble. Rule number five, hills are shown with closed concentric contours. So when you have a loop inside of a loop inside of a loop, that's an indication of a hill. And the arrow up here is kind of showing you why that would be. Right? If I stayed at the same elevation, I would loop around that hill. I would never take a step up. I would never take a step down. Contour lines that form a V-shape point upstream when crossing a river. So V's indicate valleys, and V's point upstream. So a V that has a river in it is a valley, and the crotch or pointy part of the V is pointing uphill or upstream. And the seventh rule is that a closed depression on land, so an indentation that doesn't have an outlet, is shown with these things called hashers, H-A-C-H-U-R-E-S. That's an important vocabulary word, hashers. And the reason that we need to do that is so that on the map, we can tell that this is not a hill, right? If we just had a loop and a loop and a loop, we would think that it was going up and up and it was a hill. But because we have the hasher marks, the little kind of tick marks pointing to the inside of the depression, we know it's not a hill, it's more of a bowl shape. Notice that the contour lines repeat on opposite sides of closed depressions. So we have 290, 300, 310, another 310, and then dipping down to 300. Right? Because as you were climbing, you'd go 290, 300, 310, up and over the hill, back down to 310, and then down to 300. Right, so you have repetitions um, in, when you have, excuse me, <coughs> excuse me, uh, when you have uh, a closed depression, you're going to have repeating contour elevations. Um, unless you're on a slope, in which case, on the uphill side, upslope side, you do not have a repeat, and on the bottom downhill side, you do have a repeat. The change in elevation between any two different adjacent contour lines is called the contour interval. The contour interval is found in the bottom center of a topographic map from the USGS, usually right underneath the scale. So this, this map has a contour interval of 10 feet. The contour lines are drawn at multi multiples of the contour interval. So if the contour interval is 10 feet, that means there's 10 feet elevation change between each adjacent contour line. So they might be 620, 630, 640, etc. To help determine the elevations of contour lines, on most USGS topographic maps, every fifth contour line, called an index contour, is printed as a bold line, extra dark, and the elevation is written along it. So this is the 1550 index contour. This is the 5100 index contour. And we don't even need to look at the contour interval because we can see if this is 5100 and this is 5150, we have one, two, three, four, five jumps in elevation to make up 50 feet of elevation. 50 divided by five is 10, so our contour interval on this map must be 10. Also, you can see reference points of elevation um, benchmarks, that's what BM stands for, uh, often show you at this point right here the elevation is exactly 5132. They're often located on the tops of peaks or at road intersections, um, sometimes along uh, dams or rivers. All right, so we can look at some exercises here. You can quiz yourself a little bit. Uh, what's the highest elevation of the landform on the area represented by this topographic map? And it means the highest possible elevation off that list. So if we look at this carefully, right, we've got an index contour line of 5400, an index contour line of 5450. 
So that means our contour interval must be uh, 10, right? 5400, 5410, 5420, 5430, 5440, 5450, 5460, 70, 80, 90, 55. So this would be 5510. And inside of this loop, because it doesn't have hasher marks, it could be something a little bit higher. So 5510 is the contour. The highest possible point inside of there would be 5512. We could also consider what's the lowest possible elevation. Uh, a trick for finding if you have a big map, this map is simple, but if you had a big map and you were looking for the lowest elevation, water runs downhill. So if we look at these rivers running this way, this way, we would expect the lowest elevation to be somewhere in this area because remember the V's point upstream, so this is downstream, and our lowest elevation is going to be down in this closed depression. This is a 5400 and we have um, we're on a downhill slide, so we're not going to, we, let's see, will we be repeating? We will probably not repeat, right? This is 5400, 5390, 5380, and inside of here it could be something less than 5380. So our best answer is probably going to be 5378. In addition to indicating elevations, contour lines can be used to determine the direction in which rivers and streams flow. I was just talking about that, the V's point upstream. So those are the basic ideas of contour lines. Um, remember, a contour line connects all points of equal elevation. Contour lines can never cross or branch. Um, the closer they are together, the steeper the ground is, the further apart they are, the flatter the ground is, and when you have loops inside of each other, that indicates a hill. A hill. <coughs> or if you have hasher marks on those loops, that indicates closed depression. And when contour lines cross rivers and creeks, they make a V shape, and the V points uphill. Right? Those are the main ideas of contour lines.